This is the Talk Work Centre. Now, on its own, it is a large platform. Uh, it's obviously got the ability to take um, a piece of work and actually fix it down to its surface. And it's got this large carriage that, uh, by the lock and brake, it can transverse along the, uh, the x axis there. And the carriage itself can run on the, the y axis beam here. As I've described in another video, it's got uh, six degrees of freedom, it's got three axial and three rotational uh, movements that, that it's capable of. But all that's uh, not very useful unless you can actually put a machine onto the, uh, or a tool onto the machine and, uh, and make use of it. Now, they've used a, st a uh, they've come up with a standard way of fitting all the tools, and it's down at the, the bottom of this plate here. There are uh, three holes. The center one takes a bolt, and the other two take these little pins, if you like, to stop the uh, tool rotating. Now this here is one of one type of router mount, and you literally put it on there, put the bolt through from the other side, do it up, and you can mount your router to the, uh, to the Talk Work Centre. But in this video I just wanted to show you the range that is currently available to, uh, to fit to the machine. Now the router and the, uh, the mount that I just showed you can take either the Makita or the Hitachi. And it's just a matter of uh, taking off the uh, original plunge base, which is a very, very simple operation. And uh, it just drops straight onto this. And it uses the plunge lock of the router itself to secure the router to the mount. And using that standard fitting, that will connect straight on and turn this into an overhead routing platform. Now if either the Hitachi or Makita is not your poison, you've got another brand of router, or punch router specifically. Uh, there are other mounts available, and for example I've got here, this is a mount for the Triton. And again, it's very very simple to take the plunge base off the Triton and have it so it fits onto the torque work centre. And because it's so easy to take off, it's also very easy to reverse that. So at any stage, if you want to use a router handheld, it can be easily converted back in um, under 60 seconds uh, would be a pretty fair uh, estimate of how long it takes. Now having such a, a secure platform to mount a tool to, it's also very useful to take a very basic uh, circular saw and that can be mounted in two positions, either on this mount here which is for cross cutting, so again that mounts on there and then produces a cross cut saw with in this case up to 900 mil with the, uh, the longer arm, it will fit up to a 1300mm and give you a massive range of uh, crosscut. Or you can mount the tool end on, and then you can rip for the entire length of the, uh, of the torque work centre. There is another trick that I haven't actually tried yet, but I'm interested in doing so at some stage, uh, which is actually offsetting the, um, the circular saw at an angle and then still having it transverse along the, uh, the length of the table and that should give you quite an interesting cove cut. And uh, if you do it the same way as you do it on a table saw, uh, I think it would actually be a very, very simple operation to uh, cove cut with this uh, setup. As we've seen in the past, you can mount your drill with this and again this produces a drill, or turns your drill into a large drill press. And this is a drill press with 900 or even 1300 mil of range from the, uh, the from the pillar, and uh, most drill presses just do not have that sort of distance from the uh, from the upright. So you're quite limited in how deep you can uh, or how large a piece you can work, and still use a drill press as they having to uh, revert to a handheld drill. So this will give us a drill right out here if I want it. I can swing this right round to the other side and uh, actually drill into pieces that are actually on the ground. And of course, with all those degrees of freedom, I can set the drill at any angle and be plunging. Now the latest development is this. It's a mount to take a random orbital sander. And again, it uses a very similar uh, concept to the, uh, to the drill mount. And it uses exactly the same connection. And we can now mount your random orbital sander onto this uh, platform. It might seem a little bit unusual to do so. But remember, a random orbital sander has only got, in this case, about 100mm uh, across. And so if you've got an undulating surface, 
this will quite happily sand up and down that undulation producing a very smooth surface but one that's not necessarily flat. When mounted on the torque work centre it's going to keep the height consistent over the entire length and width of the, uh, the work centre's operational range and so not only are you then using your random orbital sander to produce a finish but it also becomes a flattening tool as well and in this case with a 40 grit very aggressive cutting sandpaper mounted in it it then becomes a surfacing tool as well as then being able to pick up the higher grades and use it as a finishing tool.